This SD card right here holds the key to your happiness. No, it's not full of cute cat photos, but it is full of a custom operating system for your Amber Look handheld that'll transform it from this uh, ooh, into this. Oh, oh holy jeez. And today I'm going to show it to you, show you why I love it, and show you how you can make this yourself. Yay! Yay. Hey there, how you doing? I'm Tech Dweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. And I'm not gonna go off on a rant here, like I've done in basically every video showing off these things, but the short version is that Amber looks sucks at names and I'm awesome. So hence here forthwith, you are to call this the bizazzle, and this is the zazbizzle, and this is the zazbiddy, and this is the flibzizzle. Those are the new names, so use them. When the Bazazzle was released late last year, the firmware on it really sucked. But now if you buy any of these things, the system's actually good. It's, it's not amazing. It's not going to win any awards from the Retro Emulation Firmware Society. <laughs> Those stodgy Onion OS loving bastards can't see past their noses, much less their Miu Minis. But honestly, it's serviceable. It gives you the options that you need to have a good gaming experience. And I could just end the video there, but that would be dumb because I sat down to make a video about this custom firmware and it would be weird to say, you don't need custom firmware and, and not make that video. And besides, I think the hassle of custom firmware on these things is definitely worth it because I've personally been using an amazing custom firmware that has changed the experience for me on these things. I love it to bits and today I'm going to show it to you, show you why I love it, show you how to install it, and give you a little lesson on how to do some really cool things with it. So let's not waste any time and... Thank LitNXT for sending me all this stuff. They sent me this bizazzle, zazbizzle, zazbiddy, and this flibzizzle so that I could use them to make videos like this. So it's my job to tell you that if you want any of these, you should buy it from them. And I'll have links to all of these on their store in the doodad below if you want to pick any of them up. The firmware that I'm going to be showing you today is Newly. Apparently, Newlies are fireflies. I didn't know that. I looked it up for this video. And that, that would explain why their logo is uh, a bug, I guess. Newly is amazing. That's why I'm showing it to you today. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there are other firmwares out there like the stock OS, modified stock, MinUI, and MuOS. And those are each good in their own way and might be topics for future videos. But Newly is my firmware of choice. And the reason is simple. It's emulation station based, which is my favorite front end. This is the front end that we have on t tons of systems and devices. And uh, the emulation station implementation that we get in Newly is among the best that I've used on any handheld. With Newly, you get all the best features. You get, you get a beautiful front end, great compatibility and performance even for the high end stuff, theme downloads, game art scraping, port master games, retro achievements, Wi-Fi and Windows file sharing, HDMI out and Bluetooth, and there are more features coming soon. Actually, uh, speaking of upcoming features, I need to mention that Newly is still in development. Most stuff works and works well. Everything I need to do is great, but there are a few rough edges that will need to be sorted out in future updates, which are coming. However, updating is super easy, so it's a fine time to jump on board and start using this as your daily driver, like I've been doing. The front end is beautiful, as you can see. You can browse through your games lists with nice big artwork for your games. You can favorite your games and curate your games lists right here on the device, which is the main reason that I love emulation station front ends. I've spent a lot of time working on my games lists, you know, making sure all my games have the scraped metadata and the ratings with proper names and stuff. And you can copy your game lists between emulation station devices, more or less. See, check it out. Here's my G Cloud, and I just brought over my ROM library and copied over the games list file and it instantly recognized everything. It's all right here. I do this on all my emulation station devices and it always works. No faffing about needed. Also, I love how much stuff is built right into the OS. I basically never need to take out this SD card out of my device unless I want to use it in another device. Oh, uh, let's talk about that. Uh, so since Newly is made for the entire XX line of devices, you can have one SD card that you use on multiple devices if you want to. So this is my main SD card and if I'm going to head out with my flip zizzle in my pocket, I'll toss the SD card in there and all my stuff, including all my saved games, 
games is there with me. And if I'm home on the couch and I want to zazzbizzle it up, I'll toss it in there and be right where I left off. Also, once you get your card set up the way you want, if you want to duplicate that card for different devices, you can do that on your computer. I made a video about how to do that. Check it out linked in the doodad below. The installation process is actually ridiculously simple. All you need to do is head over to the Newly website, newly.org, linked in the doodad below. There is a quick start guide under the play section if you want uh, written instructions and all the basic info that you could want about how everything works. Under the installation section, the guide has you go to the GitHub repository and download the version that you need for your device. The only alternate version that you need to worry about is for the 28XX, also known as the Zazbiddy. That device has a completely different screen than the larger devices. It's a, it's a rotated screen, so you need a different install file for that device. The rest of the devices can use the same install file. So download the install file that you need. Then you'll need to flash the image onto your SD card. And that this is where we need to talk about SD card sizes. Th this, this can get complicated, so just try and follow and I'll give you my easy recommendation in, in a minute. With Newly, you will need a place or partition to store the system and also a partition to store your games. These can both be on the same card or you can have one card for your system partition and a separate card with a games partition on it since these devices have two SD card slots. The default game storage partition will be in EXT4 format, which is Linux only. So you won't be able to pop that card into your Windows PC and be able to access all the files. However, Newly can read Windows XFAT formatted SD cards. However, however, Portmaster games, which I'll talk about later, uh, many of those have issues when you use an XFAT partition. So you'll need to stick with EXT4, you know, which is the default. This isn't generally a problem since you can transfer files to your device wirelessly, which I'll show you. However, the Zaz Biddy does not have Wi-Fi, so you'll need to go with XFAT for that device, unless you have a Linux PC, in which case you look like this, and you don't need my guy to tell you how to do any of this stuff because you write your own custom operating systems while you eat breakfast. I'm going to recommend that you do what I do which is to use one big SD card, mine are 128 gigabyte silicon power cards. I'll toss a link to those in the doodad below, and you can stick with the default partition and copy your games over wirelessly. But on the Zaz Biddy, I did the other way, where you put this uh, the system on a small SD card, like a 16 gigabyte card or whatever, and then you have a second 128 gigabyte SD card in XFAT format, and you can point newly to use that instead. And you can just add the games by popping that in your computer. And with that out of the way, let's do the flash. So we'll go over to our PC and we'll use the program called Belena Etcher. And in here, you can select your image file that you just downloaded, then select the drive of your SD card, and then click flash. The flash will not take long, about five minutes total. You can watch some uh, tech dweeb while you wait. Uh oh, that's a problem. You're not subscribed. Well, let's just go ahead and fix that. There we go. Isn't that better? Once that's done, you're ready to pop it into the TF1 slot of your device and then you can boot it up and it will go through the install process and then after about two minutes, you'll be in emulation station. The first thing that you'll notice is that there's music playing. I don't know why they do this by default. Surely most people do not want music playing while they're browsing their games. So let's turn that off by pressing start, going down to sound settings and turn off the front end music option. And now we're ready to start using this thing. But before I show you all the ins and outs of what you can do, let's add some games. Like I explained, we're going to be using the method where we copy the games over Wi-Fi. However, real quick, let me just explain this. If you wanted to use the second SD card method, you can toss in a Windows formatted XFAT SD card. Go down to the system settings and then down to storage device and then change that to external. It'll need to reboot and it'll populate your SD card with folders and then you can plug that into your computer to copy over your games. But we don't need to do that because we're going to use Wi-Fi, which means that we're going to need to connect to Wi-Fi. So go to the network settings under the main menu, enable Wi-Fi, and then pick your Wi-Fi network and then enter your Wi-Fi key. One, two, three, four, five. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life. And then go back and you'll be connected. That's it. That's all we need to do on the device. So let's go over to our Compooper. As long as your Compooper is on the same network, you can open up the run dialog by pressing Windows and R and then type slash slash newly like that. 
and then press enter and it should open up a window that has a folder called share. This is the share partition on our device and in there are all the folders that we can access. This is where you can copy over your BIOS files and your games. I'm not going to tell you where you can find those things. I don't want to support piracy after all. But if you have the stock SD card that came with your device, you can find all that stuff on there. So on my PC, I'm going to copy my BIOS files into the BIOS folder. And then I'm going to copy over some ROM files to each of their respective folders. And when that's done, you can go back to your device and press start to get to the settings. Go to game settings and then select update games lists. And then boom, look at that. All of our games have been added and we can browse through our games and pick a game and play our game and everything is working amazingly amazing. All the emulators are set up with some nice convenient defaults. Everything should just work fine. And when you're in a game, here are the shortcuts that do stuff like open the menu and save your state, fast forward, that, that sort of thing. You can read through the wiki if you want to know anything specific. This isn't a full tutorial because there's a lot that you can do on here. But there are a few more things that I want to show you. The first is themes. You can download themes for Newly to change the way that it looks. I love the art book theme that they have applied by default, but there are lots of others to choose from. To browse the available themes, go down to updates and downloads and then themes. And then in here, you can browse through the available themes. And when you find one you like, you just press A to download it. And then when that's done, you go back to the main menu, go to user interface settings, theme set, and choose your new theme. And then when you back out of the menu, it'll be applied and newly will look different. Next up, we have our retro achievements. You can sign into your account right in the newly front end by going to the game settings and then retro achievement settings. And in here, you can turn on retro achievements and then add your username and password. Then in your games, you'll be getting your retro achievements. Congratulations. Also, I want to show you the game art scraping. To do this, you could just go down to scraper from the main menu. And I suggest that you use a uh, screen scraper as the scraper, but you'll need to set up an account. And if you sign up for their Patreon, you'll get a premium account. I highly suggest you at least sign up for a free account because screen scraper is amazing, but the games DB works all right. If you're lazy and you don't want to sign up for anything, then go into the scraper settings. And in here, you can leave everything on the default or change stuff if you you want it but the the one thing that you should definitely change is your preferred region set that to usa if you're in north america because otherwise it could replace your game names with european names and you can enter your screen scraper username and password if you're using screen scraper down there so let that scrape away you, you can still use your device but don't turn it off um i recommend just leaving it to do the scraping it could take quite a while if you have lots of games but when it's done you'll see that you now have nice fancy game art and metadata show it how cool is that and the last thing that i'm going to show you is ports newly has access to portmaster which is a program to automatically download ports for PC games. You can get to Portmaster by going to the ports category and selecting install Portmaster. This will run the Portmaster install script and then you can go back to the port section and choose Portmaster. Now, Portmaster has some ports that are ready to run. All these you can install and play, no configuration or extra files needed. Most of these are either homebrew games or abandonware games. But the main event is that you can install ports for a ton of PC games. Let's check out Shredder's Revenge. You can install this and it'll download the install files, but it won't work right away. You'll need to copy over some files from the PC version to get it to work here on Newly. Which files are those? Well, the Portmaster website has all the instructions for every single Portmaster game in their service. I'll toss a link to this in the doodad below. So you'll need to head over there, check out which files it needs for your, your game, and then copy them to the correct directory the, the same way that I showed you how to copy over your game files. It's a bit of an extra step. It's a bit of work. But if you want to play Bellatro on your bizazzle, this is what you got to do. The compatibility of Portmaster games isn't perfect in Newly. Um, I think this will get better with updates. There will be some games that don't work, but tons of them do work. And the only way to find out is to try them out for yourself. And that that's it. That, that's all I've got time for today. A little tour of Newly, my favorite custom operating system on the XX family of devices, how to install it, how to do the basic stuff. Now make sure that you check out that Newly wiki if you need to know more about anything.
there's a lot more information over there and it's uh it's it's well written and, and well laid out and it's all very convenient and there's more great features coming to newly so make sure you check back for updates in the future and you're gonna want to click that subscribe button if you haven't yet for more videos like this uh, let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me in the future but that's it from me for today i'm tech thanks for watching Bye bye